It's everybody's favorite time of year. It is the time of year to debate Major League Baseball's most subjective and sometimes pointless award. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I didn't know we were talking about manager of the year. I got to completely go and do my research now. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, today's episode is, is brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper Picks, and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app. Use the promo code LOCKDOWN. You'll get $100. $100 match in first deposit. Terms, conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use. For details, currently operational over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Uh, I just want to go back and kind of po- post-tease some of our shows this week. We've had a lot of good discussion. We talked about the Brewers yesterday. Um, I'm blanking on the other team. It's been a long week. Uh, I talked about Juan Soto. Yeah, ta- Juan Soto. Uh, talked about Mark Wiley on Monday accidentally, and uh, you know, you, you if you're you're not catching them all, you're you're missing out on me being half brain drained uh, while still coming up with digging for facts. I kept bothering Justin today as I was sending him like random uh statistical cutouts of minor league players like hey look at this guy hey look at this guy one of them uh i'm gonna tease we'll talk to talk not talk to we'll talk about this offseason who's the player of the maybe guardians we near him. maybe we can get him uh nearly drafted we we can't say or, or near let's put it this way i can't say nearly drafted but a player that we know was was nearly connected, to them. connected that was connected to the organization that some people really um we're big fans of who could have been in the system so there, there's a fun tease uh justin <laughs> well this is less fun uh <laughs> everybody saw on x twitter whatever we're calling it twitter. these days it's, it's twitter. twitter um x is everyone, not a thing everyone's yeah you're right the, the manager of the year thing is such a goofy award so maybe that takes the number one spot for <laughs> award i care about the least uh um, oh, 100 for me gold glove is right there among number two and i always find gold glove to be super goofy and subjective and um not always accurate i mean every, look whenever there's awards voting whether it's all-star or, or whatever award comes up there's always someone who's good who's left off everybody has a player that they can cherry pick some stats and say that guy deserved to be on there hey, gold uh, glove anymore like like I, I think we've at least come far enough on the gold glove thing that like we're not getting Raphael palmero nominated anymore when there were the year that he played like yeah. one inning at, at first base in the dh slow year and it was all it was all a reputation thing and yeah, reputation I, still plays a lot into this think about how much easier this job was and was just a mailed in thing like you know there that's whenever there's an older baseball writer and you're like why is that guy so old and bitter it's because they can't be lazy anymore people call them out well, stuff you can find information i mean the palmero thing did blow back but it's hilarious that we had to get to that point that like in 98 and 99 uh in 97 he won three gold gloves in a row and I'll go pull out the year he didn't. So 97, 98. Yeah, in 99, he played 28 games. Yeah. 246. I, I'm curious to know if the process has changed, though, because right now, right now, how it works in terms of determining, I don't know if anybody knows this. I'm sure not a lot of people do. How Gold Glove is voted on. So it's 30 managers and six coaches from each team vote on a pool of players in the league, excluding players from their own team. So those that that comprises seventy five percent of the voting, and then the other twenty five percent is from the Saber Defensive Index, which is the Society for American Baseball Research. By the way, not Saber Metrics, the Society for American Baseball Research. So people on Earth are they're saying, "Oh, Saber Metrics, blah blah blah." Um, I don't know who you're so, talking about. Right, yeah, right. Well, writers and media have no bearing over over co- okay. searches now for or these. So because I don't know. If I can't. I can't say like for sure Rafael they ever no, Maybe, I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure they did back in the day. Um, yeah, this it's interesting. Uh, these come out, and it's always good for a debate, for some chatter. It's interesting names on the list. Uh, it still, some points, feels a little out of touch when you see the list, or you know, players on it, guys who barely spent like half the yeah. year in the big leagues, guys who are not good defenders. I mean, is it 
Uh, Alec Thomas had 374 at bats this year. Uh, he played, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry, 402 played appearances, 125 games. And it's still like, I mean, that guy was up and down and he was an excellent defender, but is, is he that good? We'll talk about that. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I think the voting, the voting split right now is interesting because I know we keep saying this is such a subjective and, and uh, award that necessarily doesn't matter, but maybe, maybe it's more interesting than we think because it's a good litmus test for the people who say, well, because I, I, I really don't think 30 Emily managers are looking at outs above average, defensive run saved and all that They're stuff. Not. Not. So it's, it's an interesting litmus test of, and I, I think this is an, a use case to look at for other, other things because 25%, like I said, 25% of this goes to the society of, um, baseball research defensive index, which does look at things like outs above average and um, other metrics. And then you have the, the managers and coaches who are using quote unquote, the eye test, which everybody loves to say is much better. So this is an interesting matchup between if everything matches up properly. And I, I'd be interested to apply it to other things as well in voting, which I'll, I'll bring up probably but later. It, it also season. definitely leads to um, in addition to that, it leads to, um, there's still bias, huge bias. Still- I mean, like, I'll, I'll just put this right out there. Like, the the organization got the most hosed by this is Kansas City. I know they're terrible, but they should have at least had three players in the top three for this discussion, and they ended up with I don't think anyone. And like again, that's it's the human element, but it's also like it just shows that um, the the you know how this is so subjective. Uh, I I can't. I have to one quick off topic, but on topic, this always makes me think back to when I would get the old Athlon guides or whatever, like sports illustrated would do their baseball previews. And I just always remember like my first, like Rick Riley experience, reading him complaining about people calling him golden <laughs> gloves and him just having a whole, like it, it was a piece in like the mid nineties that he would essentially rewrite uh, every day in some form of being a crotchety guy <laughs> uh, for the next 20, 30 years. But yeah, uh, Kansas City, you're right, had at least three guys that probably yeah, I mean, and Bobby guys. Witt of all people should have been like the the American League shortstop rankings might be the worst composite list. But let's let's not start there. Let's start in the order they released him. We should start at first base. Well, let's just go by who who in Cleveland has been nominated to. Let's just get that out of the way. So first up, the most obvious one was Andre Jimenez, who is on the second base list. Second best defensive second baseman in baseball. You should win that award going away. Third, third overall in in MLB this year in defensive runs saved at eighteen. Or I'm sorry, outs above average, not defensive runs saved. Uh, outs above average has become the more dominant statistic in terms of uh, looking at metrics to to decide these things. There's there's actually a very big, uh, somewhat sometimes a big disconnect between defensive runs saved and outs above average. For a while, defensive runs saved was kind of the the sexy statistic to look at for defensive yeah. metrics, and now it's but- and UZR was one of those things now, but everybody, yeah. everybody's relying on, on well, the average, with, so. with the U the U uh, the user was uh, it takes three years of data. Like most of those old metrics, you needed three years of data to do a composite cycle. So one year was not enough to actually be a, yeah. a sample size would work. And the best part is, always... like, you know, it, it, just real quickly, as you talked about that Andres is third, the guy who's second on this list, by the way, uh, didn't even make nomination. List. <laughs> yeah. This is why it's so and, and the guy in the second was was Thyro Estrada, who yeah. all, cause sometimes you see guys nominated who have good offensive years. So it's like, so and he had a good offensive year. for some reason though, offense always plays into this because it's always like okay, like um, Michael Garcia a- didn't have like a great offensive season, and Kyle Isbell didn't have a great offensive season, so they're left off. Bobby Witt did. Right, yeah, that's what I said. Bobby, Bobby Witt's the biggest snub here too, because yeah. besides Estrada, because Bobby Witt is getting gets a lot of attention. There are people hey. who are saying he might get some MVP votes because he just had <laughs> a great season. Yeah. Uh, and Estrada I had say, a good like, offensive season too, if you look under the that's, hood. That second base NL list is a murderer's row. The third best second baseman in it baseball is. by defense is Bryson Stott, who made it. The fifth best Nico Horner who made it like, and those are guys all over, like at the exceptional level. Yeah. And then Ha Sung Kim, who has a really good reputation and, and had a breakout year. He's going to get MVP votes. Got it. Um, Marcus so Semien finished 15 or finished 11th in baseball at 15 mm-hmm. uh, um, outs above average. And then yeah. <laughs> we showed Dubon 
on this list is had kind a of negative hilarious. value. I want to say, right? Yeah, he had a negative one. It made no sense. Yeah, uh, for him to be on there is just hilarious. I, I mean, that's that, and that's going to be again. That's going to be a test of someone's votes for. And, and remember too, the, the own organization cannot vote for their own players. So you're getting other people from other organizations voting on voting for this guy too. And he shows up on two on two spots. He, he shows up for utility and utility. second base, which is just absolutely hilarious. So I'm very curious to see. I would love to see the votes where those come in because I can guarantee the majority of ballots from the uh, Society of American Baseball Research was not on there. All right. Cleveland's got a couple more uh, Gold Glove nominations on this year's list. We'll talk about them and if what chances they stand to win a Gold Glove and if they even belong on the list. You cannot bet on gold gloves and defensive plays on sleeper, but what you can do as Texas and Houston are trading back some runs uh, here in game three and then we had game four tomorrow and you're seeing the game, the, the series in the NL, NLCS shift back to Arizona. Look, Philadelphia's going to keep hitting home runs. Arizona actually hit, a, hit quite a few home runs in the first couple rounds. That's how they knocked out Milwaukee, Corbin Carroll and, Kettle Martin, Christian Walker were hitting some dingers. That's how they knocked out a couple of top seeds early on. Um, if you want to have a chance to uh, times your money by 100, uh, cash on Daily Fantasy Baseball, never been easier, never been more exciting, making picks with guys like Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper and postseason hero Nick Castellanos, apparently. Uh, so you can pick more or less on stats like homers, hits, strikeouts, Max Scherzer's back for the Rangers. Didn't have a great start tonight, but he, if he gets another start, I'd bet on him for strikeouts because I think he's uh, going to do better his next time out. Um, Altuve, you Young, both homer tonight. Just this, yeah, you so you can bet over or under on those stats for up to 100 times payout on Sleeper. Get your picks right, and you can win big and use promo code LOCKDOWN, uh, LOCKDOWN and you'll get up to $100 match on your very first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. And I think both ALCS and NLCS action is coming your way on Thursday. So make sure you're tuned into the Sirius XM app to get all of the action radio wise. So I'm I, I feel pretty confident saying Andre Jimenez should win uh, going away. Should should win this one again. And this is Jimenez. one where the eye test matches up with numbers. Yeah. <laughs> and Simeon had a very good year. I don't want anyone to come back and be like, oh, you know, he had a good year. It's just Again, Jimenez was the third best defender in baseball. Yeah, I mean, just just a fantastic year all around. I don't think there's any yeah. any doubt about that. So that would be his second in a row, and actually it would be the third uh, in the last four years for a Cleveland yeah. player, Cesar Hernandez, winning yep. one at uh, at second base in 2020. And, I forgot about that. And, yeah, because that 2020 year was only based, I believe, on the Saber metrics. That was the year it just went based yeah. on the the valuation. Yeah. So no surprise either that uh, Stephen Kwan in left field is nominated again. This uh, is absolutely yeah, dominator this is, defensively. Yeah, he is also among baseball's best. Uh, he finished with I lost him here on my sheet. Uh, Twenty ninth, uh, nine defensive runs say or nine. I keep saying defensive runs say. It's outfield. It's out above average now is where he's at. Yeah, he <laughs> he had a nine. Number two on the list was Christian Christian Yelich, and that's above average, yeah, that's which ML, measures yeah. everything like going to a player's left, going to the right, going back, going mm-hmm. in versus righties versus lefties. It's more, you know, success rate, estimated success rate, success rate added. Uh, he is he was a nine. Yelich was a four. I was kind of shocked. I w- was prepared to shred Eddie Rosario, but Eddie Rosario was third with a three. Like, I was so used to, like, Eddie Rosario. How about the Braves, by the way? Like, let's talk about coaching at the major league level because they got Eddie Rosario from Cleveland in 2019 when he was abysmal in the first half. And he ended up being a, he ended up being a big player for them in the postseason that year. And he's been there ever since. And he's been a solid contributor. And for years, Eddie Rosario was thought of as a very average defender on a good day. Uh, yeah, and on I mean, he, he had, uh, you know, I remember talking with, um, God, I forgot his name. who used to be locked on twins coast, uh, uh, but he was talking about how, like, you know, there will be Eddie moments. Like, he's going to have days where he is just unbelievable, and then there's going to be points where he costs you a game. <laughs> so the fact that he is nah, gold glo- nominated for a gold glove this year is – that's NL, though. So the next one that comes closest on the outs above average list is Taylor Ward, who is not mm-hmm. on the list for this award. 
Uh, instead, it's Austin Hayes and Dalton Varsho. That's my target this offseason. Austin Hayes? No, uh, Taylor Ward. Taylor Ward, yeah. That's been your yeah, target. We'll have that debate for another guy. Uh, Austin um, Hayes, one out, about, one out above average, and Dalton Varsho, one out above average. Varsho is a very good defender. I, I really don't know. I've seen much of Hayes. Um, if you also look at two on, on baseballsavant.com, yeah. um, they also have runs prevented, too, which is another metr- metric that yeah. might go into this. You know, Akil Badu and Chase McCormick also qualified in left field, uh, as did Travis Jankowski, who's always been known as like an all defensive guy. He's basically Miles Straw. Yeah, um, there's no no real surprise here too that um yeah. mile or I'm sorry that not mile straw. We'll talk about him in a second too, but yeah, none. Stephen Kwan we'll should win that. this one going away. Yeah, it would not uh it would not it would be a surprise to me if he did not win this one in left field. And then the last nominee for Cleveland um is Jose Ramirez at third base, which you know, maybe this one's a little more surprising, maybe not. I kind of felt like at times Jose didn't have his best defensive season. Um, and you could certainly look at the list and. He was actually third best in baseball. Up. He was. In, yeah, in he ended up being third best. But the, the crazy thing about this list is uh, the, the top guy two guys. <laughs> well, the top two guys were left off. Like Jose Ramirez is the third best. Uh, top two were Mikhail Garcia and, and uh, who. Eh. Jenny Suarez, who had a good year all around. Like, it's kind of surprising he gets left off. I know Chapman is just because he's Chapman, and like for a long time he was just otherworldly. He was just slightly below Jose. Uh, Bregman, like, he's fine. He's just nothing special. Uh, but yeah, it, it should be Miguel Garcia was the guy here. Like, he was the guy who had the year. Yeah, Miguel Garcia got snubbed, and Eugenio Suarez got snubbed. By the way, on Stephen Kwan, uh, 10 assists from the outfield, throwing assists. That made him uh, 12th among all outfielders in baseball this year. And Dalton Varsho had 10. And who else was on that left field list again? That was uh, uh, Austin Hayes. Well, yeah, I, don't, I don't even see him on the top list. So Austin Hayes didn't really contribute much with his arm. But uh, but he had a one. He was Yeah, he was like tied at a one. Like he was with a bunch of those other guys. Who were yeah, so that but that's also something that goes in. It's not just outs above average and it's not just all that stuff. Like yeah. outfield assist, I'm sure, is something people take into account here. And he had 10. So Stephen Kwan, I'm, again, pretty confident there. Jose Ramirez, like you said, finishing um, number two in, in the AL. In, he's, he might number have three a, in the AL and outs above yeah. average. He's... I think I think on this list he's gonna I think he's gonna win just because I don't know if he's gonna win I bet it still goes to Chapman because Chapman was only one run behind him and he still has the reputation. Um, yeah, very this could close. be a reputation thing for sure. You're right. I but I, I I know you're saying who's with them, but I, I gotta take we gotta talk first base before we we uh, uh, and we gotta say American League shortstop is the biggest disaster on this list. That is the worst <laughs> one. The worst defenders on this list go back to left field. Kurt, um, not Kurt, man, why Kyler Kyle Tucker. At like a negative four value, though Ian Happ was at a negative seven. So left field had your worst defenders who made it. And then first base, listen, Carlos Santana didn't deserve to be there, but I appreciate him being there uh, on that list. Nice to see him popping up. He's He has never gotten the reputation he deserved at peak, like how good he was defensively. And he was robbed the year. I forget what year it was. He was robbed by Eric Cosmer winning because yeah. everyone's like, oh, he's good at he's a it's scooping balls than out of the yeah, he's, He was always better yeah. than Hosmer. Hosmer is like the head to toe, most overrated player so far in my lifetime where it's like, he was never that good. Um, especially for the money he got. And then uh, in the American league, honestly, one could make a case that a strong case, Josh Naylor should have made that list. Um, Ryan Moncastle has a negative value as well. Uh, he, yeah. that was, it, it's weird. And Josh Naylor had the second best. He was just one uh, outs above average behind Rizzo. So yeah, it, it, he should have probably made this list. Uh, and Miles straw, he is not on the list. He didn't have a bad year. He just wasn't the best defensive center fielder in baseball. He actually tied Alec Thomas, who we mentioned, who was up for um, you know a limited, uh, very similar players this year. Go look at the offensive profile for both of them and their defensive profile. So still a above average to plus defender. He just wasn't a 70 grade defender. Like he, he was a 60 instead of a 70 this year. He was not. And that's another point of discussion with Miles Straw is that if you're going to pay him what you're paying him, I know we, we ripped him to shreds yesterday yeah. on his birthday. Poor guy. We had a lot of. Well, you did. Let's talk don't, about Miles Straw. Don't, don't, hey, now. Don't. Hey, now. It, it was. It was. You, it was all right. Jeff, you heard Jeff's, Jeff's a Miles Straw lover. Jeff, I Jeff just, wants I, I think, 
Uh, I just think Jeff wants uh, to put Miles Straw hitting fourth because he drives an I think RBI. He's the, yes, yes, I do. No, I think he's the perfect 26 man. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to just yeah. I'm going to stand by that. I know he's overpaid but in that role, but he is. You look at like you said he man. he fin- he didn't have as good a season this year defensively as he's had in the past. It was still a good season, but so much of his value right now is tied to speed and defense. He didn't steal bases this year. Again, I guess this is going now that Ahmed Rosario is gone. I guess this is the next guy we're going to try to. Uh, make we, all of our shows bashing about. Yeah, listen, he he is what he is. Uh, he is not very good. He's overpaid. Uh, he does have some skills, but uh, like I said, if, if you're stuck with the sunk cost, I, I can deal with him as a sunk cost. But uh, what we should do is maybe take that break, come back and talk about some managers and maybe some deals, uh, potential players, get into some of those stats I was sending you like mad today. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach over and grab the Jace case. I, I probably should be, you know, looking through and reminding myself exactly which one of these will help with my <coughs> my sinus infection. I'm gonna cough on Mike because it doesn't it, it goes with everything we're talking about right now. But it is just it's a simple convenient. It is a fantastic case. You are getting life saving antibiotics, and the nice thing is then you have them on hand. Just like if you get a headache, just like you know if you get a cut, it's good to have medicine on hand that can help you out when you are sick and you don't have to get caught unprepared. You have the ability to take care of this for yourself. I mean, I, we got, I got NyQuil upstairs. You got various medications at all times available to you. Why not have antibiotics that can actually fully get the job done and get you back to what you need to do? Uh, I will always bring up my never ending sinus infections. It's fall weather changes. They wreak havoc. I currently, this is just asthma, but if I get another bad sinus infection, I'm waiting for that. That's what this Jace case is going to save me from. Uh, so, you know, go check out Jace and they are the solution to your problems. So go to jacemedical.com, enter the code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on at jacemedical.com and that's J-A-S-E medical.com. Make sure you're checking out all of the LCS action on your Sirius XM app. All day Thursday, <clears throat> both games uh, going on. Just kind of looking at the center field list, too. I'm going to go back to the point Miles Straw. I'm going to finish it. It's <laughs> all, just... A lot of his, his value is tied up in defense and speed. And if you're not getting, well, again, goal, 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 the Gold Glove Award is subjective, as we've talked about. Yeah, he, there he's are, still there a plus are... defender. I don't know if this is the thing to shred him on. That's fine. No, that's, I'm not saying, no, it is because if you're not getting a guy who is impact, like, okay, five outs above average, five runs prevented. Like, I'm sorry. This is, like you said, he didn't have a 70 grade, 70 grade defender year. That's what you're paying him for. He doesn't get on base. Well, he doesn't hit. They're paying, paying him to be the guy he was when they traded for him. And he's not that guy. Like exactly. So you know, he's not the guy who's a league average bat. He is going to be, bat. if he is going to be in the tank so much as, as, a, as an offensive player, then he needs to make up for it with defense, and he didn't do that this year. I'm not saying he didn't have a good – he had a bad defensive year. He had a good can, defensive year. And, and we can but it wasn't good enough to offset his offensive problems, which, again, makes him – like you said, he's a sunk cost, but it doesn't – it doesn't uh, There's also doesn't the excuse weir- the fact the they're missing what he's really paid for here. Well, there's also the weirdness, too, we talked about with the fan graphs piece, which shows that like, he just – sometimes without outs above average, if you aren't getting the opportunities to get those additional plays, to get those additional That's outs – that is the one problem with outs above average is a statistic. Like it is saying, Oh, this is a play. Not everyone else would get to. If you don't get the opportunities to get to those plays, if those opportunities don't present it themselves, then you're not getting as high of a value. So it's, it is not a perfect step by any means, but sure. uh, you know, speaking- who's, do you know who also is on this list too, for best center fielders this year that I thought was interesting um, in terms of outs above average. I just closed it out. Uh, so oh. let me know. Alex call finished 12th at yes. seven, seven outs of average third best in the national league. He should have been yeah, on good, that list. Good for Alex call. Former That's, guardians, I mean, long time minor leaguer. There's ups and downs with him, but uh, I mean, he's a hundred percent a guy who should be in the majors. And one of those guys that will forget like, cause he, it's, he, he's, he's mile straw, right? Probably best outcome. Um, but Maybe. he's another guy. They just kind of gave away for free. And those like free outfielders they're giving away last year. Yep, yep, he was given away for free. Um, so according to a reporter from the Toronto, gosh, I gotta I gotta bring it up here because I sent it to myself, but um 
I guess I didn't send it to myself. I sent it to you. Uh, it is Scott Mitchell from the uh, Toronto I can pull up the... TSN. I think that's Toronto. I, 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 I'm sorry for if any Canadians listening because the TSN, that, that is essentially the, I think it's the Toronto Sports Network. That is essentially uh, like ESPN in, in Canada. Sports, uh, I mean, it's also that, just uh, the, the sports yeah. network. If it's what, like the Canadian ESPN, it's just the sports network. Then, right? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. So he is saying that uh, both the Guardians and the Mets have first base coach for the Blue Jays, Mark Budzinski, on their list of managerial candidates, which isn't a surprise because Mark Budzinski spent um, about five years, four, uh, four years in Cleveland's minor league system as a manager. Actually, another guy I have – uh, history with too. This he is good, good history. Not like, yeah, yeah, not like Craig Albert has. Yeah, no. Yeah, this guy was good. Mark Budzinski is a good dude. He uh, he was the manager for the Lake County Cap in 2014. Moved up in the system as a manager in 15 and 16. Uh, it was also the manager of the Rubber Ducks for a couple of years. I should say one year. And then the Blue Jays when uh, actually when when Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro made the jump to uh, Toronto, he ended up coming over there with them eventually to be the first base coach in Toronto. He's 50. Uh, he's a baseball lifer. He's been in baseball, I think, since 94 or 95. He was actually selected by the Indians in the 21st round in 95 and then played in the system um, for quite a few years. Didn't have much of a major league career. Um, fun note, he also is a real estate agent in the offseason. I always find that very interesting about him. He's always selling houses in the offseason. Great dude. I, I don't really, I can't really tell you a whole lot about him in terms of like, Look, they don't give minor league managers a whole lot of room to like manage and make strategic decisions because it's all about development, right? This guy's got to get four bats today. This guy's got to pitch today because all all the relievers are on a, on a on a schedule. Like this guy's got to get an inning today. This guy uh, can't pitch today because he's pitched a couple innings or he's hurt. Like minor league managers don't really have a whole lot of room to be creative. What they are paid to do is develop young players and motivate them, make sure they're putting the work in. Um, but generally likable guy. Players seem to like him. I know he treated the media very well in Lake County when I was there. Not that that really means a whole lot about anybody because um, that's very, very little about the job. Doesn't really say what he would do. Um, but how you treat people does matter. And and if he's treating people like the media well, who he doesn't really have to interact with and doesn't really have, and that doesn't have to be a big part of his job, um, can safely say he's probably better to his players and uh, I always heard good things about him. And if he doesn't stay, if he doesn't come to Cleveland as a manager. I wouldn't be shocked to see him as a coach here. But I believe he's also in the running to move up third base coach. Third base coach because Louis Rivera, who's also a former uh, Cleveland minor league manager, he retired. So it should be interesting if if they hire Bud or, or interview Bud, as he's known as around Cleveland. Yeah. Yep, casting a wide net is never a bad thing. Uh, we also had some talk about Trey Snicker, son of, um, Brian Snicker. Yeah. He's, he's a little more interesting than, than Mark Budzinski. A lot, lot younger. So Budzinski's yeah. 50. Troy Snicker is only 34. He'll be 35 before Christmas. Um, obviously Brian Snicker's son, Brian Snicker is the manager of the Braves. Um, this is kind of a less sourced, uh, report, but we're going to talk about it anyway, because it's just worth mentioning in case, there is any sort of interview here. Um, he is a younger guy. He has been with the Astros for a couple of years. He's been a manager in their system as well. Uh, very, you know, brief minor league career that wasn't great. Uh, I do think it's interesting though, that he taught himself Spanish. Um, so he does, he is bilingual, which does matter. And these things, I don't think it's a, you know, that our manager has to be bilingual or it won't work. I think it's a nice to have, but it certainly is an interesting qualification to bring to the table should they ask for an interview with him. And look, he's worked with Astros hitters going back to uh, 2018 or 2000. Yeah, 2018. So that's a good a good system to work with in hitters. I, you know, there's some questions there about whether or not he was around with the Astros uh, front office and, and coaching staff being a little bit che- you know, cheating think- and culture is kind of rough there before. And, and I do think we have to, you know, for as much as some people don't like when we talk about some of the managers and like age being a thing, I think again, it's a thing here. I think there's a degree of 
his youth is going to work against him. And yeah, it's not to say that, you know, young coaches can't work just like older coaches can't work, but it is a little bit harder sometimes to command a room when you are, you know, as young as he is. So I, I think, so I want to quickly compare this. I know we're running out of time, but um, when teams go into the draft, they draft players like Cleveland drafted Mac Hewer this year, pretty sure they weren't going to be able to sign him, but it's a chance to talk to and get to know a player and talk to them. And it's the only chance you're going to get. And Cleveland used to, you know, they drafted Austin Martin, Asa Lacey, several high picks. Uh, and it was a chance to talk with them. This is a chance to cast a wide net and talk to every coach they're even remotely interested in. Uh, right. I know I said the wrong team, but uh, you, you get my point. It, it, this, this provides an opportunity that they don't typically get. So why not cast that wide net? Why not talk to anyone you're remotely interested in and take that one opportunity you have? Yeah. You, again, when this process all finishes, we're not going to know what X candidate said or, or thought that they decided wasn't a fit for them. We're only going to find out who they hired and what they heard from them and what they, what they think, why they think they're a fit. We're not going to hear about why this guy wasn't a fit or <clears throat> what they were looking for specifically. So it is, it is an opportunity to talk to everybody. And, and there's, again, you can talk to guys and say, well, we're interviewing for the manager job or we're using this as an opportunity to get to know people. Um, you can always bring these guys on your staff too. You can always say, Hey, we went in a different direction for manager, but you know, this, this job is available. We'd like you for it. It's, it's a promotion. Um, so you can, you can also, you know, use this as an opportunity to see if guys are fit for your staff. If there is somebody you do hire that is interested in Troy Snicker being on their staff or whatever reason. So like you said, it, if, if any future role comes up, you want to get to know these guys too. So that way, you already have a background on them and, and they're, they're familiar with your organization and you see if there's a fit to work together, whether it's manager's job, hitting coach, whatever. Yep. And we want to thank all of you for joining us again uh, during the off season for these fun discussions. Uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow, especially if you are a Justin fan as I will be doing conferencing. So, but uh, again, thank you all for joining us. And as we end every show, go, go guardians, go.